Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to continue with the introduction to our course on DataCamp. And we are working on matrices today. Alright, so a matrix would be similar to a two-dimensional array in other languages. I guess it would be a two-dimensional list in Python. But it's also a math term, which is, I assume, why they're using it. And it's, uh, it's two-dimensional. It has some number of rows and some number of columns. The code example for how to create a matrix, declare a matrix, you use the matrix function. You pass in the elements of the matrix, which you can just use a, uh, a range or a combine function. Or I assume if you have a vector. But it just needs to be a list. It doesn't have to be arranged. It'll arrange it for you. You have, is this filled by rows? True or false? And then you have a number of rows. And I assume that means they'll figure out the number of columns. Like uh, nine numbers divided by three rows would make three columns. Now, it looks like they want me just to copy that same line. So I do matrix 1 to 9 oops, uh, by row equals true, all caps, and number of rows equals 3. Oops. All right, so I run this, but we're not probably outputting anything. Oh, look, it output the um, the matrix. So we have our three rows and three columns. It fills by row, so it goes, the first row is 1, 2, 3. The second row is 4, 5, 6, and the third row is 7, 8, 9. So they want these three vectors into a matrix. So like we learned with the last exercise, a matrix needs to be given one vector or one row, one list of data. So for box office, we're going to do combine. If this works, I think this works. Oh yeah, they, they tell this is the first line in the instructions. New. Oh. Comma, empire strikes, comma, turn Jedi. And now we need a matrix. We pass it box office. So I assume instead of declaring this variable box office, you could have just used this combine. Um, it's up to you which way you do it. There's, there's benefits. Doing this way creates an extra line of code. It creates an extra variable, but you also may need the variable for other things that you're doing. So this could be good. Doing the combine inside of this function could, uh, in my mind, it could take up a bit more memory because it has to remember that it's creating a matrix. So it's uh, interpreting this function, but then it has the combine function also to interpret. Uh, I don't know if that actually uses more memory. That's just something that I've been wondering for a lot of years. Next we do by row, and I assume that's true. And next we do the number of rows. Equals, and it says use three rows. I'm thinking if we just do this as one line, it'll output the matrix, but because we're storing it in a variable, that's why we don't get output. All right, submit. The force is actually with you. It's because Star Wars. Our objective in this exercise is to add 
titles or names to each uh, column and row. So they created the vectors. So if we're doing three rows, these are the three rows, the titles of each row. And then there's going to be two columns. As you can see, there's six total. So row one would be element one, and then row two would be element two. They created the vectors that contain the names, but it looks like my job is to use the names function. So this is all we're doing is we have a function called row names. Oops, this would be call names. And then you open your parentheses, pass in the matrix, which is Star Wars matrix. And then you, uh, instead of equals, we use the R assignment operator, which is the arrow. And then we pass in region. Now we do the same with row names. We pass in the matrix, which is Star Wars matrix. We use our assignment operator and pass in titles, which is the titles of the movies. Now, it wants us to print out the Star Wars matrix, which I assume you'll just give it the name. It understands we want it printed, and look. It gave us columns. It gave us rows, it put the titles in there, that's pretty cool, I like that. Alright, submit. Great, you're on the way of becoming an R Jedi. <laughs> so in here, we want to calculate the worldwide, um, I guess, uh, ticket sales for each movie. So we're supposed to do row sums. Um, open parentheses and we pass in the matrix and we get no output but that, that gives us a vector and so the vector is going to have three elements first element is your US plus non-US for a new hope continue this exercise teaches us how to add a new column to a matrix and the column we want to add is this worldwide vector. And what they say is we use C bind, which I assume the C stands for column, and then you're binding it. And I assume what we pass in, see how the example says matrix 1, matrix 2, vector 1. I would think what we want to pass in is our matrix, which is Star Wars matrix, and then we want to pass in our worldwide vector. And I'm assuming that's it. Okay, we still have no output. Nice job. Adding a, after adding a column to a matrix, the ne logical next step is adding rows. And I'm hoping that the row will also be a sum, so we can sum the worldwide vector. Like, we'll have a sum for U.S., a sum for non-U.S., and a sum for worldwide. Alright, and here it says R bind, which would be row. And then C bind is what we just used in the previous one. They also have this explanation on here about a workspace. And that's a link that you can click on to read more about it. It says you can, in the console, type ls as a function. And it will list out what is in your current workspace. Which is the variables we've defined for, I guess, this project. Because this link said you should save your projects in different working directories. And what they want us to do is to use rbind 
to bind together the rows of Star Wars Matrix and Star Wars Matrix 2. Okay, we have no output. I don't know why I keep running. Continue. Okay, so they are giving us all Wars Matrix. They want us to use call column sums and pass in the all wars matrix. And then they want us to print out total revenue vector, which is the result of this sum. Okay, so that gives us the US and the non US. I'm supposed to be able in here to just type all wars matrix and look at it. So they have the six movies. They do not have the worldwide total column that we created in a previous exercise, though. On line two, they're starting us off with the same matrix we've been using. On line five, they want us to select the non US revenue for all movies, and we're assigning that to non US all. all right. And in the instructions, they say that is the entire second column. The way that you select a column is you type all wars matrix, the name of the matrix, use your open square bracket for selection. We skip typing a number for the row because we want the or because we want oh the first number is a column. We skip typing a number for the column. As I've stated many times, I am not articulate enough to be able to explain things. They want us to select the entire second column. So you type comma two. This uh, number that we're skipping is the row, which you can read about here. This one is the row, the two is the column. So we want every row that is in the second column. Now we want to calculate and print out, so not assigned to a variable, the mean of non us all now they're challenging me because i have trouble thinking through this they want the non-us revenue for the first two movies so i want to start with the matrix and then i'm going to select with the urban square bracket the second column is the non-us because i learned that from line five but we only want the first two movies, so I assume I'm supposed to do one colon two for the first two movies. Now they want us to calculate the average non US sum. Now, if I run this, okay, so. I'm going to go through what's in the console. The console repeats what we've typed in the script. It then prints out the entire matrix because of line 2 is equivalent to a statement. It then repeats what we've typed on line 4 through 8, which is just what we see. It then displays the mean, which is what line 8 asks. Typed on line 10 and 11, and 13, 14, and then it prints out the average 13, 14, and then it prints out the average from line 14, because that's equivalent to a print statement. So I'm going to submit. Continue. Okay, they want us to... Do some math on line 5, and then line 8 is just to print out visitors. This, um, 
whatever, this is going to be a number or a vector or a matrix, I don't know. Oh, uh, okay, so we're going to take all wars matrix and we're going to do divided by five. We're assuming a $5 ticket price all over the world and every element of this matrix will be divided by five to give us the number in millions of visitors. Let's see what happens. Okay, so in the U.S., for a um, new hope, 92.2 million people saw the movie, according to our little math thing here. Okay, interesting. Submit. Uh, so the, the point of this is you can use operators, uh, at least those four for sure, but these other ones probably, uh, on a matrix, and it will just do that. Uh, use that operator on every element of the matrix. They say the same thing works in vectors, so if it does, we must have learned that earlier. Okay, so what we're doing in this exercise is multiplying the all wars matrix, which is what we've been using, with the ticket prices matrix, which contains the ticket prices for each movie in each region because ticket prices go up over time. So this is the same thing we did in the last exercise, but taking into account that ticket prices change over time because the first movie came out in the 70s. But they have a note here. <clears throat> Those who are familiar with matrices should know that this is not the standard matrix multiplication for which you should use percent times percent in R. Matrix multiplication, from what I remember in school, it was it was complicated for me to think through. There's, there's, you have to have the number of rows in one matrix has to be the same as the number of columns in the other matrix, and you have to remember what thing to, to do where, or you'll completely mess the whole thing up. So this is not that. This is just a standard element one element in row one, column one, times element in row one, column one. So to estimate the number of visitors on line six, I assume we're going to use division again. Yeah, it says do all wars matrix divided by ticket prices matrix. Now we want the entire first column. Of, of visitors to get the number of US visitors. So how we get the entire first column is your open square brace. Leave the row blank and put one because R starts with one instead of zero. Now we're gonna calculate the average of US visitors, which I assume, oh, US visitors would just be a vector. And so this is calculating like we did in the vectors exercise. So that's uh, 75 million people on average went to see each movie in the U.S. Okay, so we're done with matrices. I'll be back at some point to talk about factors. I assume this video ended up being longer than what I'm used to. So hopefully it went well. Hopefully somebody found this useful. And thank you for watching. And thank you for anybody who has subscribed or liked or commented on any video.